Hey, Chief Architect people. Um, are you a little bit intermediate or advanced? That's what this video is going to be catered towards. Intermediate or advanced user. I'm going to assume that you know the tab input method and a few other things that go over here. It's going to be very fast paced. We're going over how to create an angle back banquette with cushions. And uh, we want these to be a modular setup so we can use it over and over and over again. Okay. You can always put these together piece by piece, but to make it modular, it takes a little bit more setup, takes a little bit more time. So I like to draw a lot of these things just in my uh, 3D views. So we're going to start from a 3D view. Pull a camera here. And I like to kind of just set up some or, or, or initial sizing, if you will, in my 3D view. So I'm going to use a cabinet. And then from here, let's just make this 48 inch cabinet. We're going to say that it's only four inches in depth. So we got to subtract 20 inches from that. And we're going to say that it's 18 inches tall. So subtract eight. And now let's open it up. And then in the general panel, let's say it's zero inch thickness countertop. And then the front sides back, we can just hover over this, select and delete all these items till we get to blank face. That's all I need. Next thing up, I want to draw out just a solid. I don't really care where this is placed exactly. I'm just going to make sure that this is centered up on my cabinet here and let me switch views and I'll go ahead and take this solid concentrically resize the width of it. Right. Then I want to do a back clipped cross section view. And from here, I can zoom in tight on my section and we can use our move edit mode to kind of drag this up and snap it and then snap this guy to the front face of the cabinet snap this back down to itself and subtract 20 inches because I want to have a 20 inch tall high back. I'll maybe move this in at an inch and a half or something like that. Okay. Now we can go ahead and close this view. Bring back to a 3D view. We're going to see here. There we go. There we've got our taper place. Let me go ahead and color coat this the way I want to and I can move it off to the side if I want to. And then let me also come in here and fill it. I've got my fillet set to eighth inch. So I'm going to use a 3D fillet, kind of fillet these edges. This, just soften up the look of this before I convert it to a symbol. Now I'm going to convert this to a symbol from my edit menu. Okay. And I want to make sure it's a fixture class. I do need, not need to add it to the library in this case if I don't want to. And then I want to make sure that the taper itself is oriented so that it's facing the camera. So get in the 3D panel, rotate it twice 90 degrees so that it's facing us. And then let's get into that options panel. And we're going to say that this inserts into the countertop and that this is a sink kitchen. Okay. Now that we've got that all set up, go ahead and hover over and click and it's going to apply it to this base cabinet. Apply a material to this base cabinet. There we go. There's our base cabinet with a banquette angled back. Let's throw another cabinet in here and we're going to make this a 24 inch wide and it's going to be 18 inches tall. So we're going to subtract 18, but we're going to subtract another four inches on top of that. Right? So it's going to be uh, whatever that is, 18 plus four, two inches. That four inches is going to be the size of our cushion. Okay. And then uh, the other part of this is that I want to make this 18 inches six inches. There we go. I could of course center it up on this cabinet and we know that then it needs to only move a um, number of inches this way, which is 12 inches. There we go. That's lined up on that side. Okay. Now the next thing is I want to change some of these face items. I'm going to go ahead and delete this item and we can make this to something like a door panel. If we want We've got a framed panel. Retaining the toe kick, maybe you do or do not want to do that. And then in the general panel, let's uncheck uniform overhang in our left and right side. Just make it like a 16th of an inch or something like that. I'm going to press OK. Now the next part is a little bit tricky. We're going to get in and look for a cushion in the catalog. Now we have cushions in the catalog. They're in some of the bonus catalogs. Okay, So I'm going to actually turn off search online because I know I have a cushion in my Immediate user catalog. And there we go. 
And this particular cushion has some offsets, so I'm going to do some things that you do not need to do, which means I'm going to fix some of the offsets. In that 3D, I want to go ahead and set this Y position offset to zero. I'm just reverting this back to what it should be just out of the box. Advanced sizing. Um, for this case, I want to make this just short of my overall width of my cabinet. So 23 point, maybe 0.5. And let's go 17.5. I like that four inch depth. I don't need um, the spacing on the left and right side there. There we go. That's looking pretty good. I want to first convert this to something to generate a new block based on my new size. Okay. So based on the new size, notice once I took away that left and right side, I didn't uncheck this update when object dimension changed. So we're actually going to change this back to that 23.5, uh, 17.5. All right. Now that I have that, let's convert it to a symbol. I don't need to show advanced options and I don't need to add it to the library. This is just to generate a block, All right? It might have been an unnecessary step, but this will generate a new block. I want to edit that CAD block, okay? Now this should be a 24 inch overall size or 23 um, and a half overall size. That's great. I want to select this. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to paste hold back in, which should be the center of my drawing sheet. All right. And I'm going to select one of these inner circles, copy, paste, and then I'm going to hover over this resizing node and just draw this in a little bit, not to the point where the fillet crosses itself, but just about there. And now I'm going to convert that to a countertop. And in the subsequent dialog box, I'm going to say that it has a hole in that countertop. Now I get to select all this together, generate a new CAD block that we then open and name something like um, CAD block or cushion top. All right. From here, let's go ahead and convert this cushion top one more time. And actually, we don't need to. I think since we already created a symbol for this, we just need to designate that it inserts into a countertop and that it's a kitchen. And then in the 2D block, we're going to locate that CAD block for cushion top. What we did was modify the hole that it cuts in a sink. So when we apply this, um, to our cabinet, it's going to adjust that hole so that we still see a platform underneath the cushion, because otherwise it would have been to the outside bounds, the outermost geometry of that cushion. So from here, let's just add it to the library so that we've got it. Maybe we want to uh, make sure that we're naming this something appropriate. So in the 3D panel, let's just call this cushion top, and then in parentheses sink. Okay and then add it to the library, and we should be able to hover over this and click. There we go. Now let's make a duplicate of this over 24 inches. And if we did everything correctly, which and we're moving real fast. Uh-oh. Boy, I hope I didn't screw back. Did everything correctly, this should look Right. Sweet. Now you have a three piece adjustable banquette. Very cool.